Good evening. Tonight we're going to start chapter 26. We're going to be talking about invertebrate evolution and diversity. So anything that's not a chordate. Um, when did the first animals evolve? Um, now, of course, you know me well enough by this point. Um, I, I do believe in evolution. I do believe that things um, change. Okay, they're all, always constantly changing. Um, the, the evolution that we're going to be discussing in this chapter, the things that you're going to be going over <clears throat> um, in your reading webs, are people's theories. And I want you to keep that in mind, okay? I, I still want you to read through it. I want you to give it um, the respect that it deserves as a theory. Um, but I am in no way saying that um, <clears throat> that I believe that that God didn't just create everything, all right? But this is a part of biology, and so we need to go through fossil evidence. We need to look at um, the different theories that are there and the different um, eras that we're going to be talking about as well, okay? I'm not going to be covering all of the chapter and lecture. That's why you have such a thick reading web. What I'm going to be focusing on mainly are the different phyla that we're going to talk about, mainly because I think it's much more exciting. Um, and, and then we'll be moving on. All right, so when did the first animals evolve? Fossil evidence indicates that the first animals began evolving long before the Cambrian explosion. This is one of many of the eras we're going to talk about, or you're going to talk about. Um, roughly, for roughly three billion years after the first prokaryotic cells evolved, all prokaryotes and eukaryotes were single-celled. Animals evolved from ancestors that shared with organisms called cyanoflagellates. Um, these are single-celled eukaryotes that sometimes grow in colonies. Cyanoflagellates share several characteristics with sponges, the simplest multicellular organisms. And we're going to focus a lot on sponges, the phy phyla periphera. Uh, traces of early animals. Our oldest evidence of multicellular life comes from microscopic fossils, that are roughly 600 million years old. And as someone asked me the other day, how do you find microscopic fossils? I'm not sure, you just look really hard, I guess. The first animals were tiny and soft-bodied, so few fossilized bodies exist. Recent studies have uncovered incredibly well-preserved fossils of eggs and embryos that are 565 million years ago. I'm hoping we have time this year to go into how these things are, are um, aged, how they can um, make the predictions about ages and the controversy that's there. Um, I want you to realize that just because someone tells you something is 565 million years ago, um, they're, still, they're still not completely proven ways of doing this. The Cambrian Explosion. The Cambrian period began about 542 million years ago. The two major Cambrian fossil sites are in Chengai, I know I'm not saying that right, China, and in the Burgess Shale of Canada. Shale is a type of rock. Cambrian fossils show that over a period of 10 to 15 million years, animals evolved complex body plans, including specialized cells, tissues, and organs. Again, remember, these are theories. Um, some early Cambrian fossils represent extinct groups so peculiar that no one knows what to make of them. By the end of the Cambrian period, all the basic body plans of minor, modern phyla had been established. So that cladogram we've looked at, um, their, their, their um, theory is that all of that was done by the end of the Cambrian period. Later evolutionary changes, which produced the more familiar body structures of modern animals, evolved variations on these basic body plans. So what this is saying is that even though most of the most of everything um, was evolved by the end of Cambrian explosion, there have been minor changes. Okay, you'll be doing um, an exercise with this tomorrow in class, the Kingdom Phylum class order families, genus, species. You're going to be going through, I know some of you mentioned in class the other day how you learned um, to keep these in order. I want you to come up with a whole new way um, with your group tomorrow. Um, this also shows for um, for people, okay, if you're talking about for us, we're in the kingdom Animalia, the phylum Chordata, the class Mammalia, order Primate, family Homidea, genus Homo, and species Sapien. That's why we say we're Homo sapiens. You take the genus and the species. Um, 
this is the six kingdoms of biology. Um, we are focusing uh, for this section just on animalia, but I want you to be aware that out of the kingdoms, you have plants, you have archaebacteria, you have eubacteria, fungus, and protist. Okay? Um, there's some controversy within the bacteria as to whether they should be one or not, but um, just focus on, we're just going to mainly be doing animals. Um, <clears throat> kingdom of life. So if we're talking just about, so these are all of the um, kingdoms. We're going to be just focusing on animalia. So we're going to be talking about periphera, uh, uh, sonardia, um, sonar, sonardia, I never say it right. Sidaria, there we go, Sidaria, Platyhelminthes, Nematoda, Animal Analita, Mollusk, um, Arthropoda, and echinoderm Echinoderms. All right, so this is where we're going to go um, later in the week, and you're going to be looking at these in much more detail and watching videos. So modern invertebrate diversity. Today, invertebrates are the most abundant animals on Earth. Okay, so we're outnumbered by the invertebrates. Invertebrates live in nearly every ecosystem, participate in nearly every food web, and vastly outnumber so-called higher animals, such as reptiles and mammals. So what does the cladogram of invertebrates illustrate? Um, the cladogram, which you see here, you should be familiar with, um, invertebrate shows current hypothesis of evolutionary relationships. And remember, these are hypotheses. These are um, just ideas. Um, groups shown close together are more closely related than are groups shown farther apart. The sequence in which some important features um, evolved is also shown. Okay, so that's all we have. Um, Tomorrow in class, you'll be uh, watching a video on classifications, um, working on a, an interactive notebooking. And then tomorrow night, you will um, have another, another Educanon from me. Uh, we'll start talking about sponges and um, some other really exciting things. All right, have a good evening.